Hello everybody! Today we're going to unbox, take a close-up look and test the HyperX Quadcast. So let's first take a look around the outside of the box. So in this box is the HyperX Quadcast standalone microphone and it comes with a two-year warranty. And here are some of its features. And now let's go ahead and open up the box by cutting apart the sticky seal that's keeping the sleeve secured to the box. And now let's slide the sleeve off. And before I can do that, actually, there should be another seal there right below. And let's... Cut that off or apart, and now we can slide the box sleeve off. And I'm going to set that sleeve on the right hand side of the frame. And now let's take a look at the box and look simple enough. Let's see if we can get this to open. Uh, let's figure out which way is the right way to open the box. So a bit of fiddling here. Let's see. Let's see if this guess is correct. I'm going to lift. Hmm. Maybe not. Just trying to figure out which side is which. So let's see. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Bit of a mystery here. Okay. Maybe this way. Nope, not quite. Or maybe just simply flipping up that top. Not quite either. Hmm. And let's try it this way up. Seems to be some resistance there. Not quite sure why. And let's see. Okay, so there we go. So that's how we open the box up from the bottom and flipping out and up. And that's all the time we have for, for this video. See you next time. Okay, anyway, this is looking straight into the box of the HyperX Quadcast after spending a good minute trying to figure out how to open up the box. And there we go. So just flipping up the box lid so it opens from the bottom. And now take a look inside, of course, and lifting up the contents of the box. I'm just going to quickly take them out and we can take a more detailed look at them once we've removed everything from the box packaging. Okay, so let's continue to remove the contents. So there is some packing foam and excuse me if I'm doing this a bit slowly because I have to really reach out and stretch my arms out because of the video camcorder setup and tripod that's kind of in the way okay so that's the packing foam let's set that to the side and here we have the lovely HyperX Quadcast standalone condenser microphone resting nicely in the box packaging as you can see right there in the styrofoam tray interesting to see a dark or ash or gray colored styrofoam right there okay so let's lift out the contents so it does come with a three meter long cable let's set that down and continuing with the rest of the contents there is some adapter mounts and what else is there big pardon if it's coming across slightly dark and here lifting up the quad cast microphone right there from hyper x and then lifting the bottom foam packaging just to check through and make sure as always that nothing else is left in the back box packaging okay so setting that down and it's nice to see that it is recyclable as well with the triangle recycle symbol so 
Always good to see. Okay, so that's the box emptied very thoroughly and very simply. Not much stuff to remove from the box packaging at all. Okay, so here we have the Hyper X Quadcast. Now giving you a look at the size of it. So right there, quick look at the microphone. I'm just going to set that down and spread the rest of the contents out so we have a nice and clear view of all the accessories and parts and even papers that come with this HyperX Quadcast standalone condenser microphone. So just let me spread the contents out and making sure they are in nice clear view and in the frame of the video so right there okay so i think that should be a nice clear view of the items from the hyper x quadcast box packaging okay so let's start off by first taking a look at perhaps this piece of literature here so there is the hyper x branding and of course some congratulatory information there on purchasing this HyperX product. And moving on, we do have what appears to be some support information or contact information for this Hyper. X quad car so it does come with a two-year warranty so that's good to know let's set that down as well and moving on to the next item we do have the quick start guide so over here is the quick start guide for the hyper X quad cast so just giving you an idea of the thickness of this quick start guide Take a look quickly at the back as well and then just flipping open because it's always useful to at least one person that watches this video. So right there, you can see six panels on this side and flipping over to the reverse side. And then I'm going to give you a close up look so you can see what's what. So details right there of the Hyper X quad cast right there. So 12 panels altogether. Good reference information for people or buyers or potential buyers wanting to know what the quick start guide entails and of course the details in terms of features and specifications and the other panels appear to be in other languages but I'll just show them through anyway given that we're almost there anyway with Two more panels to go and that's all there is to the quick start guide for the hyper x quad cast okay so now moving on to the next item we do have what appears to be according to the quick start guide Item G over here, which is the mount adapter. So the mount adapter supports both 3 8 and 5 8 inch thread sizes. Okay, so there we go, setting that down. And of course the microphone can be mounted to a boom arm if you do have one. And just setting that actually going to take a close-up look at the mount adapter just in case so it suits 3 8 and 5 8 inch thread sizes just right there giving you a look at the mounting hardware for the hyper x quad cast so very nice uh, so you see made out of can't quite tell plastic and of course the inner thread is metal right there giving you a look there to the tread pattern so 
So there we go, giving you a look at the mount adapter right there. So I'm going to set that down and to the side, right hand side of the frame at the back there. And then moving on to the next item, of course, we do have the, the three meter long cable. So this is the USB cable, as you can see, with a mini USB, USB type A connectors. Let's get the camcorder to focus, so just bear with me as we try and get the camcorder to focus on the connectors right there. So we have the micro USB, I beg your pardon, mini USB and USB type A connectors. Okay, so nice, good look right there at the connectors to this three meter long USB cable. And of course you can see that it is braided as well. Nice to see that detail as well to give it that longevity and durability. And of course, to keep it from tangling as well. So nice bunch of length of USB cable. So I'm just going to find a spot somewhere to place it. So I'll put it on the left hand side of the frame and then we can finally move on to the USB microphone itself. So it is the HyperX Quadcast. Just going to do some shuffling around to make sure everything is in the frame so we don't lose any detail if, as best we can here with some juggling around. Okay, so there we go. And of course, right there. And here we have finally the HyperX Quadcast standalone microphone. So it does have a nice weight to it and it is quite massive as you can see the size of it with my hand in the background with the main part of the microphone resting in the palm of my hand, giving you some sense of the size and scale of this standalone microphone. So as I mentioned, it does have a nice weight to it as well. And you can see the black and red colors. So it does have an anti-vibration shock mount as well as a tap to mute sensor at the top over here. And of course, a built-in uh, pop filter as well, which is quite interesting. Normally you'd see those things as a separate accessory on the outside, but this one has a built-in pop filter. And I mentioned the tap to mute sensor at the top as well, with that, work, that also has an LED status indicator to show you what, uh, whether the microphone is active or is muted. And this is the anti-vibration shock mount. So the anti-vibration shock mount, of course, has is a suspension style shock mount right here to minimize or reduce any vibration going into the microphone. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, this microphone can be mounted to a boom arm if you want it to have more adjustability when it comes to your recording requirements. And taking a look up close, you can see the HyperX branding right there on the matte surface. So it does have a matte silver finish on the matte black overall color of this microphone. And at the bottom is the dial for the gain control. So a very nice and smooth, super smooth operation there, not producing any kind of jitter or clicks, very, very stepless and ultra smooth with the turn or twist of this gain control dial right here at the bottom as I just turn it and I'm just going to keep quiet just to give you an idea of the action of it. So very, very quiet no noise at all so i would actually call it silent to be exact there 
Okay, and taking a look on the underside of the microphone. So some details there. And it does have silicone pads on the underside. Of course, that's to reduce or minimize any shock of vibration as well being transferred to the microphone from whatever surface that might be rested on or standing on. It's right there. Very smooth, ultra quiet or silent action on this dial for the gain control. Okay, and just taking a look around the sides as well of this HyperX quadcast and around the back. So metal construction for the stand itself. And this appears to be plastic for the frame or bracket that's holding or forms part of the anti-shock or anti-vibration mount. So nice close-up details, right round and through, and just showing you the articulation of the stand as well. So we're going to set that down, and right there, showing you in the upright position of this HyperX quadcast. And I'm just going to set it at, at an angle, or this aspect so you can see the tilt angle of the microphone so right there new an idea of course I should have loosened that out and just being very careful here so it doesn't fall apart I'm handling it in one hand of course should be done with two hands let me do that with both hands, just to be sure and safe there. So yeah, so there, adjustability there with using the thumb screw or nut here to thumb screw, I beg your pardon, to tighten or loosen and set the position to your desired requirements there in terms of the recording angle of the microphone. Okay, so the silent gain control at the bottom right here. Just moving it around just to give you some idea of the ultra smoothness of that action or motion. And of course the adjustment of the thumb screw for the angle of the microphone. And taking a look at the back of course Quite importantly is the pull-up patterns for the microphone so there is stereo omnidirectional cardioid and bi-directional recording patterns so four polar patterns right there on this dial right here with a very nice click action as well so once again the four modes starting from right this time going backwards or to the left counterclockwise so right now that one is bi-directional cardioid omnidirectional and stereo so four polar patterns for your recording requirements. Okay, so I think we've had a nice close-up look around at this HyperX Quadcast standalone microphone. So right there, once again, 
which right now it's in the most vertical position, having loosened that thumb screw and letting the microphone rest vertically or set vertically. So you can see it is a very, very large standalone microphone. So setting it down once again, giving you another look with my hands out of the way. And now I'm going to undo the cable tie to this three meter long USB cable with the mini USB and USB connectors. And of course we need to figure out where that plugs in to the microphone, which was not quite identified. So let me undo the cable tie here. And of course, as I mentioned, this cable is three meters long so plenty of length for you to set the microphone up to your desired position or location it's right there interestingly they are not gold plated but then again does it really really make that much of a difference. Okay, so setting that cable down, and let's just check. Of course, located at the base and rear of the microphone itself, you can see there is a headphone jack or earphone socket, and that's for hearing your recordings as you record and then of course right there is the mini usb port okay so let's connect the mini usb end of the cable into the port right there so making sure that it is the right way around so just being a little bit fiddly here let's do it the right way right through that section and then into the port so a little bit tricky here given that I have to look around my camcorder and tripod setup so just bear with me as I try and do this so there we go so plugged right in and just giving you a close-up look right there as to how it's been set or plugged in and now on the other end I do have the Acer Swift 3 ultra thin laptop which I've unboxed on the channel before. Let's power it on. And of course, log in to the laptop. And once we've done that, Okay, so struggling a little bit here. Okay, 
So we're finally signed in. Let's plug the USB cable into an available USB port. Such a struggle with the tripod in the way, but we'll get there eventually. So right there, and you can see the quad cast light up in red, a nice deep red. Okay, so now I think we're ready to go. So let's launch the voice recorder. So let's do that by, of course, going here and launching the voice recorder application. And of course, it's saying that the device is ready. HyperX Quadcast is set up and ready to go. Let's run the voice recorder app and let voice recorder access your microphone. And let's tap yes. And okay, so we can now record on the microphone. So let me just adjust that gain control at the bottom to somewhere in the middle. And let's try and record. So I'm going to shift the Acer Swift 3 Ultra Thin laptop further into the frame so you can see or make a bit more sense what is going on. And I'm just going to hit that record button right now and we're now recording so let's give it a test testing one two three testing one two three and of course towards the end of the video i will place the recording audio files at the end so you can hear what was recorded so right now i'm just speaking very naturally into the microphone but from quite a distance from where my camcorder is set up. So let's try this. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Okay, and let's see how well that recording comes through when I add it towards the end of this video unboxing. And of course, let's make sure that we have it set up on the right setting. So that was on the stereo setting. And now we're going to adjust it to make sure we have it on the cardioid setting, which is a more focused setting for voice or podcast streaming type recordings. Okay, so right there is the cardioid setting. I'm gonna move the microphone slightly closer and adjust the gain control somewhere a bit higher. So giving you a look I've just rotated it a bit higher now now setting that down and of course it does have a tap to mute feature so if we tap that the light should go off to indicate that it is not actively recording so there we go very nice and simple operation so I was just testing the limits in terms of the sensitivity to that touch to mute sensor. So you need to touch somewhere towards the flat end or flat top of the quadcast microphone right there. So nice, simple operation right there. Of course, gain control at the bottom and of course the polar patterns at the back. So now let's try again this time around. Just going to do another set of audio recordings and this time around it's in the cardioid setting and before then we previously recorded in the stereo setting in the slightly lower gain setting as well so now i've turned the audio gain slightly up more and moved the microphone a bit closer now as well and let's see how the microphone performs okay i'm just going to move it slightly a bit more towards the middle of the frame here and let's turn the microphone on of course by touching on the 
touch to mute or tap to mute sensor at the top. And now on the laptop, on the Acer Swift 3 laptop, let's do another set of recordings. So let's click on the microphone and it's now recording again. So this time around, once again, I'm going to say pretty much what I said the last time. And that was the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And the rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Okay, so stopping that recording right there. And let's see how the audio comes through. We can actually play it on the laptop for now. I'm not sure if there's any value in that. Let's do it. Actually, let's just do a quick skim through on the first recording right there and see if we hear anything or any playback. Okay, I'm not hearing anything at all, very oddly. Let's raise the volume, so, okay. The volume appears to be fine. Let's go to the second recording and see. If any audio has been recorded. And strangely enough, does have this microphone as the speaker very, very oddly, unless I'm understanding it wrong or misinterpreting the data right here, or at least the dialog. So let's go into the open sound settings and choose your output device. So let's go to the speaker to make sure. So now it should work fine in terms of the playback. The recording of the microphone was fine after all. Um, it does appear. So now let's play it back. Given that we've now set the speakers to the correct speakers, which are the laptop speakers. So interestingly, as I, as we've experienced right here, was that the Windows 10 decided to set the playback speaker as the Quad X or Quadcast Hyper X microphone. So now let's play back the first clip quickly and of course and we're now recording so let's give it a test testing one two three testing one two three and of course towards the end of the video i will place the recording audio files at the end so you can hear what was recorded so right now i'm just speaking very naturally into the microphone but from quite a distance from where my camcorder is set up so let's try this. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Okay, so I'm not sure how well you could hear that, but the audio quality was crystal clear. And you could see the distance in which I'm speaking from, and it's picked up that audio very, very clearly and very crisply as well. Okay, so the second audio clip, remember for this one, we had the setting of the polar pattern change from, um, it was from stereo to cardioid, and we also turned up the gain control as well as moved the microphone slightly closer in. So let's do a playback of that and hear how it goes. jumps over the lazy dog and the rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Okay, so. All right, so that was that, the two audio clips, but I will add it on towards the end of the video so you can hear it directly as well instead of through 
the laptop speakers. Okay, so that's the HyperX Quadcast and of course tapping on the tap to mute button at the top you can see that the LED goes off and of course being on like that showing that the microphone is active so very cool and super good audio quality for this HyperX Quadcast standalone microphone So that's the HyperX Quadcast standalone microphone. Thanks for watching and happy recording. And we're now recording. So let's give it a test. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. And of course, towards the end of the video, I will place the recording audio files at the end so you can hear what was recorded. So right now I'm just speaking very naturally into the microphone, but from quite a distance from where my camcorder is set up. So let's try this. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Click on the microphone and it's now recording again. So this time around, once again, I'm going to say pretty much what I said the last time. And that was the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And the rain in Spain falls mainly in the plain. Okay, so 